Good evening, everybody. How is everybody doing? Good. Fantastic. All right, great. Hello, David. Hello, Joe. Hello. You guys are doing great. Hi. Hello. Yes. Wonderful. Hi. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I am so excited. Today is week three of our 90 day plus week and incorporating the rock and roll to executive, which just began. How many of you were able to either be on the call or listen to Kathy's call? Wasn't that fantastic? Yeah, so when you get a chance, if you have not had a chance to watch her video, I love Kathy Coover, and you'll see her on stage when you get to celebration, but she's just so calm about everything, and it's so easy to talk to, and she shows you and all of us how to be the same way and how to keep it very simple and easy and just listen to them um, and not make it salesy, but just really, really remember that we're giving them a gift. And, and that's one of the biggest things about this. Is it is easy to kind of get away that this is a gift. Um, so when you keep remembering that or you listen to Kathy over and over and over, that really helps to put it all into perspective of what a gift this is. And so every time you call someone and you offer them this gift, they either want it or they don't want it, and it's perfectly fine because it's just strictly a gift from you to them. And you're just looking for those who do want it. So try and check out that video when you get a chance. Trudy and Nathan are gonna be um, this Thursday. It's every single Thursday. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're going to live stream and they'll record every video that they do. They also have bonus videos in between. Dr. Del Rey was earlier this week. Did you guys get a chance to listen to her? Yeah, isn't she amazing, Bridget? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love Del Rey. I mean, not only is she just absolutely beautiful, but she's smart and intelligent. And again, like Kathy, she's really easy to listen to and understand and she she takes it from a doctor's point of view and puts it in layman's terms so if you can use all of her things and, and repeat it now one thing and i've talked to a few of you about this already is kathy stated this and i just want to reiterate it when we are doing this and we're, whether we're doing scripts or listening to people's videos or wherever you're learning from you can take their words or the scripts and just repeat, repeat, and repeat it until all of a sudden these words start coming out of you. Like Kathy said, she used to be a disaster. Um, and if you don't know her history, she rose in her three top companies. She started off um, a dental hygienist. And then I think, which she never really goes into detail, she married Jim. She didn't want to be a dental hygienist. Jim used to own network marketing companies. And, and then she decided, I can do this. But she, you know, self-proclaimed disaster. But then she just started repeating the words over and over and over again. And she rose to the top of all three companies. But different things happened with each of those companies. They didn't pay out. She lost her volume. I think one went bankrupt, different things happened. Don't quote me on any of that. Um, and, and so that's why she left network marketing and why she retired. And then when John came into the picture, um, he took them out of retirement. And they're like, okay, great. We're all going to do this right. We're going to take the right ingredients, the right recipes, with the right mix of how to treat people. Do I sound like Kathy? Um, <laughs> she says all of this on stage. Um, so we're going to take this right mix of how to treat people and, and they put it together and that's how they formed Isogenics. So when you're a part of this, and many of you have been involved with network marketing before, you've already told me you see the difference and, and you know there's a huge difference with Isogenics compared to a lot of those other companies. It's because of Kathy, Jim, and John. And, and it all stems from them and then they teach us. But um, they, they were hurt. They, they went through all of that and they didn't want anyone else to be hurt. They wanted to change network marketing in general. And with our customer first program and everything's coming on, that's exactly what we're doing. So when you talk to people and today is all about connecting, um, hello Daphne, when you talk to people just really come from 
a very calm place, even though it's so exciting, it's so easy to get excited, but try to keep yourself nice and calm and relaxed so that you can share whatever story they're interested in. And you have to ask questions. And, and it's so easy to peel that onion. How many of you ex have experienced since last call to this call, peeling of the onion, whether it's your onion or someone else's onion? Has anyone tried to put forth that effort? Raise your hand. Let me know if you have. All right, I have. Good. Does it get easier and easier to peel that onion the more you do it? Yeah. yeah, you're just asking questions. With the same person, you mean? Same, Steph same person or different people, but what? But do you find it easier oh, for sorry. you to peel, to ask the right questions, to peel the onion back? Have you found that? Joe? I think I probably start, I probably start out too, uh, too assumptive. Right. I assume that I, I, think I know what they, you know, are looking for. Correct. Right. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. How many of you, either now or when you first began, used to get on the phone and assume that you knew what they wanted? Did that work out for you? And I'm Jill, I'm not picking on you, but did exactly. it work out for you? It, it, it doesn't. We don't. Not, not as well as I hoped. <laughs> right. Exactly. We don't know what they want. Um, and think back about you guys when you were invited to Isogenics or even a different network marketing company or direct sales. Um, did you even know what you wanted? When someone first introduced it to you, probably not, right? Your why is completely different now than what it was. But if they came at you like, like mine, Jill's like, I can help you drop those 20 pounds. <laughs> it's important to me, and then she was that blunt, and it, it caught my attention, and I said yes. But that really, truly wasn't what mattered to me the most. What mattered to me the most was spending time with my children versus sleeping. Right? So, you know, as we can right. ask questions, we'll find out what really, truly is their most important thing. So many people believe that they just want that scale to move. Does anyone want their scale to move and go down? And is that I do. Top priority, or is it really not top priority, but it's a big part? It's right? top priority. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for some people, they're going to tell you that's all that matters. And when they tell you that, you got to really kind of help them because sometimes – Sometimes that scale will move and sometimes it doesn't move. And really, honestly, it's once they relax that the scale moves. When they're all strung up and so focused on that number, they don't allow themselves to relax and they stress out and they cause more cortisol. So we have to peel that onion back and find out, well, how are you sleeping? How is your stress level? Are you experiencing more happiness? Are you having more energy? How do you feel about that? You know, and start asking them questions to find out. And they'll tell you, when you hit their trigger, they're going to tell you. They may even come up with something completely out of the blue that you've never even talked about. Like, I haven't had a Diet Coke in, in a month. Um, you know, Tabitha is one of them. Where's Tabitha? Oh, Tabitha's not on anymore. You know, and Tabitha didn't realize that for a couple years in, that she didn't want to drink Diet Coke anymore. But I've had so many people tell me that. But that's not how they started the conversation. So you will get more retention and longer lasting happiness from them when you peel that onion back. And who knows when you're going to peel it. You know, it could happen day one, day two, day ten. You know, we never know. But, but that's all going to be part of your communicating. All right, so I want to jump into the 90-day game plan, which is all about communicating and connecting and creating interest. So show of hands, I believe for the most part, almost all of you either have or gone through Jim Lupkin's Facebook training, correct? Yeah, just a couple of you have not. This is where the difference is going to come in with the 90-day game plan and what Isogenics gives us versus not having that. So with Isogenics, and of course I love all their training, but I've always felt with this company as well as a couple other companies, they never really told us 
how to communicate or how to connect with people or what to say. And that's where on page 10 or connecting step two, creating an interest, that's where you really truly need to bring in the Facebook training. When Damon asked that question, what do we focus on? What's top priority? Those two things. Um, but looking at the 90 day game plan and it says sample posts to create curiosity and interest. So how many of you are really starting to put this in play or you already have been really doing a good job of putting some posts out there. I don't care if you're taking them from other people, from posting the purpose, it doesn't matter, but you're putting posts out there and really kind of creating some interest, getting a few comments, raise your hand if you're already working on that. No, I need to. Okay, all right, so Jill, there is a great Facebook page. It's called Posting With Purpose. I think I added you already. If not, just find it, Posting With Purpose. Okay. Take, the whole purpose of that Facebook group is to give people posts that you can re-put on your page or your wall. All right, but as Jody, and I don't think Jody's on anymore, Jody will tell you, and she's going to talk about this if she hasn't already. One thing she's noticing is that people are just taking posts from other people and they're not making them their own, whether it's in our business page, our product page, or on their own personal wall. We can't do that. Like her example was someone posted about making $100,000 and she knows that person has not made $100,000 yet. We got to be so ethical and have that high integrity. And it's not that they did it on purpose. They were probably just, because I do it all the time, they just took from someone else and posted it because they thought it was a great post. So if that's the case, just give someone else credit, say from Raquel, from Journey, or from Isodonics Business, or my friend posted this today, or I wanted to share a story with you so that we're not misrepresenting our personal situations and ourselves. But you guys can take from anyone. So what I was talking to a couple people over the weekend about who to connect with, and, and sometimes it's just right in front of you. When you do one of those curiosity posts, or really any curiosity posts, whether business or related or not, and you get a decent amount of likes and comments, Go ahead and private message every single one of those people and just say, hey, thank you so much for liking or commenting on my post that I did last Sunday. I really appreciate you reading it and making a comment. That makes a big difference to me. Thank you so much. Done. So like Jim tells you, you keep it on a very personal relationship. You don't start with the business of, hey, do you want to have a video? Let them respond back to you. Uh, uh, you know, it, it could go a couple different ways. You no, know, no worries. I love your posts. I think your posts are great. They energetic. They make me energetic. Or I would like some information. Let them kind of take it there, or at least let them come where you can lead them, so you can bring it into a business question. So, in the ninety day game plan, it talks about you know using good form. You want to find that common interest and. If you know it, you want to bring that into play. If you don't know it, either do some research or kind of peel back the onion to find it. Once people find a common thing with you, they automatically trust and like you. Sounds weird, but it really is very true. So you've got to ask a few questions in certain cases. And in the 90 day game plan, it gives you examples of family, occupation, recreation, motivation. So do some kind of post that brings that out in people. And, um, you know, just, just read through your book. Um, I'll try to come up with an example. But show some vulnerability. Vulnerability, I can say that. Um, take off your mask. Show them who you are. People like to know you as a real person. They like to know our success, but they also like to know the realness and our failures. So go ahead and put something out there. You know, some of my most intimate conversations that I've had with people, private message, are when they show that vulnerability and I call them on it because I have a common situation with them. Like for an example, uh, a girlfriend from high school, she actually dated Brad in between the time when we were broken up 
but thank God we'd become friends after that. Um, but she, uh, she received gestational diabetes and I had gestational diabetes with Parker and I know it was a really difficult time for me and I was grateful to have a couple friends. So I reached out to her and said, Jody, I've gone through the same thing. And our conversations became so intimate and it was so special that we have that common thing that's very um, uncommon. Oh, I need to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom, baby. Sorry, Cooper's sick today. Um, and and it's, it's very special between us. Think back to something that you've done with someone else or a relationship that you've had with someone where it's been a little rare and a little uncommon, and either they called you out or you called them out. Think how important that is. But when people bring out their vulnerability, that's when they're also open. They're extremely open. And who we're looking for are people that are open to what we have to offer. So, again, you have that gift. Let's just use that example again. Jody has gestational diabetes. She used to eat really horribly. I had the same thing. I can come at Jody. I understand after my first child, I ate awful and I didn't exercise. I know I hardly ever exercise either, and I'm eating so bad. Um, I went through all of the stuff you did, Jody, but now I'm doing my nutrition program and, and everything. It couldn't be better. It's like this, this product makes me want to work out. Well, what exactly are you doing? And I just make little comments and she makes questions and we just kind of go back and forth to find out until we have an answer from her of, yes, I'm interested. Um, yes, you can send me information and follow up with me or I'm not really interested. And the question that a lot of you have been asking is how often do you follow up and how quickly? Now, how quickly is immediately. If you can send them some information or a video and then ask them right away, can I follow up with you right after you watch that? Just because then the video is really fresh. I'm like, sure, great, great. When do you think you'll have a chance to watch it? Will that be today, tomorrow, or the following day? Let them answer the question. Set a time. Okay, perfect. So if you can watch it tonight, can I call you back at 8 p.m. tonight? And we'll just find out if this is something you're interested in. Keep everything very... Did you vote? Okay. Okay, good job. Um, keep it very relaxed and comfortable. Nobody wants someone that's really high-strung and, and like going like crazy, like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Although they love that because they love your excitement. But... When they're, especially when they're experiencing something pretty major in their life, you have to match their emotions. You have to mirror them as a person. And if they're very calm and, or they're stressed out or they're nervous or questioning it, you need to be their counsel. You need to be the guidance. You need to be the voice that they need to hear from. I'm going to give a quick little example of someone we met this weekend. And Christina's on the phone, so you'll remember. Um, so we met a superstar, like Derby superstar, the number one girl crush of everybody in Derby. She's phenomenal. And come to find out she's suffering from a concussion. And as soon as she came up and started talking to us, we somehow figured out she asked a question or we asked a question or somehow we pulled that onion and found out what her concern really truly is that probably nobody else there knows about. She's superstar. She's got to be bad girl. And she just really, she's like, I'm going to start crying. I'm going to start crying. And she broke down. So we needed to be there for her to really understand. So we needed to be the counselor of I understand. And Annie, you'll appreciate this story. I came back to her. We're all brought together because we've gone through something or someone else we know has gone through something so that we can help someone else. And then, of course, she's like, I'm going to cry again. I'm like, you should see some of the crazy things that God puts me through in order so that I can help other people. And she's like, I know. No, I understand that. So don't be afraid to get vulnerable back with them. We don't have to go into too much detail because it's their story. They like your story and they appreciate your story, but really, truly, all they care about is their story, and they want to solve their story. So spark that curiosity, peel back that onion, find out what it is that really means something you may not find out right away, but go with that 
common theme, find that common theme, and then blend it all together to send them a solution, and then follow up. So you have 48 hours. The excitement level of what you send to them or information or, or just in general is immediate. And then it will start to dip down after 24 hours. And then by 48 hours, it's almost gone. And by 72 hours, it's gone. They've moved on. Everyone has a busy life. Think back about yourself. Think back about someone. Maybe you went shopping. All right, and someone showed you something really, really exciting. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go home and measure that, see if it fits, or try it on, and you're super excited. And then you go home and life happens. <laughs> right? And then the next day, something else hits you, and life really happens. And that shopping moment is out the door. It's not that you didn't really want that, it's not that you didn't really want to make it work for you, it's life happened. So, that's why we always have to take our, ourselves out of the picture. It's not about us at all, but it's so important for us to follow up with them and follow up quickly because life is going to happen to them. And what you're offering them is probably not something they were looking for. You just hit them at a moment where you told them they needed it. So you have to take that moment and really stick with them, link arms with them, Shove yourself against them. Don't be pushy, but make sure they know you're there. And until they tell you yes or no, you stay there. So the other question is, how often do I follow up? You've got to really kind of play that um, based on your conversation. You have to be very honest with people. And say, okay, so now is not the time for you. You just said that. Is it... Is it financial? Is it just making the change? Is it just making the decision? I'm just trying to figure this out so that I don't bother you too much, but so that I stick with you because life is going to happen and you're so excited about this right now and this is perfect for you. But something's going to come up and something's going to interrupt this. So if you can just let me know, great, okay. So when do you know when you'll be able to have that answer or that money? By the way, if it's money, they may never have it if they say, I need to wait. You know, if they get paid or a bonus or something like that, that's a different thing. If they're like, just right now, it's not good. Unless they tell you something, you've got to really kind of show them ways they can get it for free. And we have so many ways people can get it for free. They do what we do. They share on Facebook. They can be a part of a virtual party. They can do an open house. They can do a regular party with you. You can call a couple of their friends. Show them how they get it for free if money is the object. All right. So connecting step number three is just following the formula. And number one is taking responsibility. If you say you're going to follow up with them, follow up with them. That's why it's so important to schedule a time. Because if you don't schedule a time, you bring the only time that you're following up. Schedule that time. You're expecting to call or hoping you're going to call, and you have it scheduled. Number two, don't overanalyze. I have someone here who told me this weekend that they overthink everything. We've got to stop that. And that's what Kathy Cooper talks about on her call last week is, is really don't overthink, don't overanalyze. If you talk to someone and they have an interest and then they don't call you back, life probably got in the way. Or maybe they need more information. Or maybe it just isn't for them. Then you move on to the next one. Also, don't spend too much time with people if they're not ready to go. You are you guys are doing this to get to executive by July. You've got to go fast, fast, fast. So you get the interest, you find out, you schedule, you send them something, you schedule a follow-up. They're either interested then or, or not. And if they're not, schedule when to follow up with them. The hardest thing that people do, and this is probably one of the things that stops people from moving quickly in this business, is we spend too much time hoping that a particular person is going to do this versus having a huge funnel of people and just finding out who's saying yes, who's saying yes, who's saying yes, who's saying yes. Who's saying yes. And all those other people that haven't said yes are still in the funnel. Once someone comes down the funnel, that's who you concentrate on. 
but but too often people concentrate on all those people in the funnel because there might only be one, three, five, seven of them. And so we spend all of our time and energy focused on those people and they're not ready yet. So keep them in the funnel until they're ready to come out and then keep filling that funnel with more. Keep in mind guys, you guys are in this to get to executive by July. You've got to move fast. You're going to have to do some things that are uncomfortable. You're going to have to step out of your boundaries. You're going to have to go work in the masses. And one of the best people to follow, if you want to watch any videos, I'm going to give you a couple names, are Jay Bennett. He does his ABC123. Just look it up in YouTube if someone wants to put it in Game Changers Biz and make it easy. That's great. His ABC123 is so simple. It may be your personality. It may not be. You're never going to know if it's really truly you and if you're comfortable until you do it. And you can't just do it one time and make a decision. You need to do it like three, five, ten times. All right? So take Jay's information. Jay is simple. He's a little aggressive. He he's numbers. And he's been one of our number um, probably top five paid people in isogenics for about 15 years. And that's for a reason. He's numbers, 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 numbers. All right? Now Kathy Cooper is also numbers. But Kathy Cooper comes a whole different approach. Kathy comes from love and care and concern, and but she moves on very quickly. If they're not interested, they're not interested. Move on to the next person who is. Keep that person in the funnel. Write them on your whiteboard. Keep them in your contact base, but don't concentrate on them. They have not said yes. The people you concentrate on are the ones raising their hands. Me, 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 me. If they're not saying me, 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 they're in the funnel. And tell me, 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 me. All right, number three, jump and go into a direction. All right, so I have in here questions two to three. What works best for you? Okay, so one way you can follow up with people, I'm kind of reverting, but these are my notes, is what works best for you, mornings or evenings? And is eight or nine better? So get very specific about your time that you're following up with them. Not just, hey, can I call you on Monday? But let's talk next week. Get extremely specific. Okay. Before we move on, any questions about any of that? Fiona, go ahead. Sorry, okay. um, one thing I want to say is when people ask me about how often you follow up when somebody either says they're not ready or it's not the right time, um, honestly, what I do is, I mean, you're building a relationship, right? So really, you just haven't built the relationship far enough yet. So I actually still have conversations with them about other things. If I see stuff on Facebook, I'm still commenting on their stuff. I'm still leaving comments. It's not like the, the problem with only following up when you want to talk about the product is that's all your relationship is about. So you have to be really careful to do that because people will feel bad saying no to you. But if you let them know it doesn't bother you, it's almost like a fear of loss thing. They're like, well, why isn't that person upset? Like, I am always like, I don't care whether you do it or not. And then people are like, I, I mean, honestly, that's the sales technique. Um, and so the more you just keep going about your business and you're as happy as possibly could be, the more they still want what you have. Because how could you possibly be a person that doesn't care about them buying, you know? It's... The, the less you care about what their answer is, the more they want it. <laughs> so this is a, this has worked really well for me. The other thing I wanted to tell you, Stephanie, is when we did um, Jim Lepkin's program, you know, you have to be so patient and so methodical. So one of the people that I added probably three, four months ago, she, she had a baby. Her baby is probably like two or three months now. She's been losing weight and trying, and she's kind of stalled. So she posted something today, and I private messaged messaged her and I said, you know, you're doing great. Why are you so upset? And she said something else that made me private message her. And we just went back and forth and chatted. And I said, you know, I'm happy to share with you what I'm doing. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm so interested. Because we had had a conversation about our shared struggle. So it's it, the less, the less weird you are about it, the better. Thank you. That's just my opinion. Thank you so much for that. That was I, I thank you because that's 
and I was a missing piece with what I was doing. You were so absolutely correct where we are building these relationships. So while they're in your funnel, keep the relationship. You just, you can't focus on them. You can't emotionally put all of your thoughts into, they're going to get started, they're going to get started if they're still in the funnel. So you just have to keep that. And what Jim teaches us is um, categorizing people. And so if there's someone that you really do want to, like that friend of yours, Fiona, you really want to keep in touch with her and you really want to know what's going on in her life, but she's not ready yet. She's in your funnel. You can mark her as someone you see first. So all of her posts will keep coming up to you. So as you get into Facebook, her posts will come up so you can like and comment. And Fiona is so, so, so correct. They don't want to say no to us. It's hard for them to say no. You will even have people say yes just because they want the relationship to continue, which is not at all what we want. We want them to want this. So someone, I think it's Linda, Linda always makes a comment of, hey, if you don't like it, we're still going to be friends. But I want you to at least find out if this is for you or not. So take them off the hook if you feel like that's an issue, like is she only communicating with me because she wants me to do this program, or is this the only way she's going to talk to me is if we do this? Take them off the hook. No, we are friends. I'm still going to love you. We're still going to talk. We're going to see each other more. But if you don't like it, we're still together. This is not a friendship thing. This is uh, something that I can help you. I have a solution if you're interested. Not everyone wants to be helped and not everyone wants a solution. So choose your words correctly. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, Fiona. Um, one of the best compliments that I've received over the years is I, I am successful in all the different businesses that I do because I keep a very large flow network. I have friends that I've had for 20 years or longer, and I communicate with them. Whether they've done isogenics or different business with me or not makes no difference to me as to if I communicate with them. Or I hope everyone does because I do look at this as such a huge gift, but that does not make a difference. The, the difference is going to come down to you'll probably have more communication with them when they do say yes, and if not, that doesn't mean you cut them off and do anything. I have someone who actually defriended me because I choose not to use her as my interior decorator at the other house. I keep in mind what? she would charge me $25,000 to decorate my house. Okay, not in the budget. We had like completely different styles. I had to tell her, no, I'm so sorry. We just can't do it. We're going to be going on the budget. She kept me on Facebook for a couple weeks. I noticed about a month or two later, she befriended me. And I called her on that. And I'm like, seriously? Our kids are in the singing class for the next nine, ten years. Can we figure this out? Because this is nothing to lose a friendship over. Right? So we don't ever want to be that person. <laughs> like, it's the, relationships are the most important thing overall. Keeping that relationship, keeping that care. It may be on different levels. It may be a certain different amount of communication. But the relationship overall is the most important thing. So thank you, Fiona, because, I, yes, we could not have missed that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, question. We are just about done. What kind of questions do you guys have about creating curiosity, connecting with people, following up with them, when to move on? Any questions? I, yes. You know, um, hi guys. So. As far as connecting, I think keeping the dialogue, just like Fiona said, you know, whether they say yes or no, just still keeping upbeat, still adding value, still commenting and liking, I like that. I think um, maybe if you run across something that maybe you think of them, like if you notice that they post a lot of football stuff, maybe if you come across an article or a post or a quote that's football related, what I've been doing is I've been 
sending them a private message saying, hey, I came across this quote and I thought of you and just kind of add some fun emojis. And it just makes them feel like, wow, A, you thought of me. You took time to reach out to me. And how are you doing? You know, I've been seeing that you've been busy. You've been this, you've been that. Like, you know, then just dialogue goes back and forth. But I think going the extra mile, like saving a quote, or anything to or an article and saving it and sending it to them for private message keeps the algorithm going and it shows that you really care and that's something different that I've been implementing on my end hopefully that helps you guys and maybe you guys can kind of keep that in the forefront of your mind beautiful thank you and Annie's a master at keeping communication if you look at any of Annie's posts and some of us will always wonder, huh, I did a great post and nobody liked or commented on it. And then <laughs> comments from people just because. Uh, because she keeps that a huge funnel of people, of just relationship building, to constantly responding to them. I've known Annie for 13, 15 years, maybe, maybe more. And from day one of meeting with her, people are like, I love Annie. And the reason is, is because she just, she communicates, she touches them. She puts a special thing in their heart, whether it's with business or not. And, and everyone that knows Annie, thumbs up, wave your hand, right? Um, that is exactly what she does. And, and she's just constantly making them feel good, complimenting them. Now, Annie has become a master at doing it very short and quick because she does it to the masses. But... The way she does it makes every single one of them feel like she reached out to them and she touched them. Mm -hmm. So you can masters at all of these little things. You can't spend the time because, again, you're doing things in the masses. But don't ignore people because you're doing it in the masses. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ann. Um, so sharing isogenics, before we hang up, there are so many ways to share isogenics. And your 90-day game plan is going to give you a little chart. We all have a little bit of a different 90-day game plan. Hopefully you have a chart. So one, you, you, you know, what are they interested in, either the business or the product or both? And honestly, they can't be interested in just the business. They have to have some interest in the product. However, we just ran across the situation this weekend. We had a gentleman, very young, who, I just want the money, right? And I'm like, <laughs> you, you got to have the product. You have to be a product of the product because people are going to ask you questions. And if you don't do the product, they're going to read right through you and they're out. However, we need to kind of nurture him. And if that's what he's really, truly interested in, and he bought a very um, small product because he doesn't care about the product. He cares about the money. So we can't get upset about that, but we can nurture him in a, hey, I'm so glad you got that product. Really fall in love with it. That's a great product um, and a great program, but you're really going to want to share these other ones, and this is why. And so you just kind of help him learn how to love the product while turning it into that financial business that he's looking for. So you figure out what people are interested in, but share both. We are a product-driven company. I always remember that. Um, do they want information? Yes or no. What kind of information do they want? Video or conversation? Three-way call. Three-way calls are the most underused and most highly needed tool, and they're free. All right, three-way calls. We are available for three-way calls. Go ahead. So I offer them all the time. Like I'm trying to do a three-way call. I I can't get people to take me up on it. I know. Like you really hear about that at celebration. So and it's like I don't I don't know how to get them to actually take me up on it. Um. So you just really kind of have to keep reiterating over and over and over. Hey, can we do a welcome call? Hey, you just um, enrolled so and so. Can we do a five minute welcome call just to um, let them feel comfortable with everything? There's no pressure, it's not business, it's just a welcome call. Can we um, do a little three way call that kind of can hear me um, speak to that person? 
And once you do it with one of your associates, they're going to feel very comfortable doing it with you again. But it's that initial time of having you do it with them. You just have to push them into it. But yeah. I just feel like if they could hear, if they could hear me <laughs> do it even once or twice. It, 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 yes, it I'm sure it you have anyone on this call right now would love to do a three-way call and have you speak. Raise your hand if you guys want Fiona to do a three-way call with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> so reach out to Fiona. She just opened herself up. Plus, it's great experience for Fiona, too. So, um, you know, do, do these. You guys work with each other. We've linked arms with each other to, to use these tools and use each other. Fiona is a master. Fiona knows how to reach out to math, uh, math numbers. She knows how to share president's packs. And that girl knows how to get people into ISA body immediately. So if any one of those things is something you want to learn, you've got a master right there. <laughs> You're a master. Uh, um, it's something that the company talks about all the time, and, and very few people use three-way call. Many of you on this podcast have a three-way call, and I want to compliment you on that. But do more. Absolutely do more. Okay. So then you share a video, you give information. Um, never ask, did you like it? Or is this what you want? you got to peel back that onion. So did a story in the video make sense to you? Was there someone's story that really hit home? What do you remember most about that video? Make them talk to you. Have them give you an answer. It's too easy to say yes, no, okay, thanks, bye. No, oh my gosh, yeah, that mom that talked about being a mom again with her kids, that really hit home for me. Get them to talk to you so you can find that common ground. Um, they're either interested or they're not interested at that point. You've got to ask those questions like we talked about last weekend. You have to ask closing questions. You guys are in sales. This is sales. You have to ask. So is this something that you're ready to get started with? I'm glad you love that video and that story. Is this something that you're ready to Let's go ahead and do it. So are you ready? Do you want to go ahead and get your path? Should we talk about what path is best for you? Those are all closing questions. If they say no, it's really not up for me. No problem. No problem. Hey, we're still friends. It has nothing to do with our friendship. Take that off the table right away. Make sure they don't get worried about that. But no, it's really not for me. No problem. We'll still stay friends. But I'm really on a mission to help people. Do you have anyone else in mind or someone else that came to mind when you were watching the video that might have an interest that I could get in contact with? Yes. No. All right. Please keep me in mind for anyone. If they ever come to mind and someone someone hits you like, oh my gosh, Fiona needs to talk to that person, please ask them if I can call them. All right, I never put pressure on you. Be positive. Whatever. Ask for referrals. And then you go for it. All right, real quick and then we will end. We have all kinds of different tools. You can send people videos. You can go straight from YouTube. You can get the ISA tool to go. Click and send a program. If you spend the $14 a month and get the tools to go, that will also give you email campaigns that you can put people on. As soon as you get their information or as soon as they enroll on it or whatever, you can have the company email them, whether it's daily, once a month, once a quarter, you make that decision. You can have launch parties, tasting parties, events. We, can, we haven't done a Zoom party for a while. We can go back to a Zoom party or a Facebook party. You guys just say the word, and we're more than happy to come together and do these things. The three-way calls. Just sit down and make, make phone calls. Do a fun post. Again, business or not related. And like that in private message every person that liked and commented on Jim will tell you, you have to private message them. Hey, if you respond to them directly on that Facebook post, it's pretty general and it's pretty public. It's not as felt as when you come from a personal message. And when you personally message someone, put your name at the bottom, do your message, and then Stephanie. There's just something more personal about that. You'll touch them in a bigger way. 
when make sure you're doing your happy birthdays. Make them a very special. My kids make a birthday video that I send out to people. We need to do another one. And I send that out. It makes people smile and laugh and feel loved. Michael Anderson sings a happy birthday song for every birthday. You can use the same thing over and over, but you just have to spend the time every day to send that out to people so they really know that you care. Um, Jim will tell you that he has happy birthday messages that go back for five years, but they know exactly who they are. One of my massage therapists knows Jim. And I told Jim, I'm like, hey, look who I'm with. He's like, oh my gosh, we're happy birthday friends. Like every year we say happy birthday to each other. They had no communication in between, but both of them knew exactly who each other was. Top of those happy birthdays. Um, and, and just just relationship building people use. This is where you really bring in the faith or the Jim Lupkin training. And he is starting. He opened it up today, I believe. It's either today or tomorrow. He opened up his new online training. So I don't want to give you guys any more because you've got it. Like, but if you're looking for more personal development and you really are ready to take things to a whole new level, Jim's online program is off the hook. It is going to take away every objection you have or someone else gives you. It's going to take away every fear, every concern that you have. He's going to help you get rid of it and learn and teach you how to just this relationship building guru. So um, I posted his video. Check that out. Just search for Jim Lovekin. Ask questions if you have any questions with him. Does anyone have any questions for tonight? Okay, I promise you no, I shorter. It was a little bit shorter, but a little bit longer than I wanted. Mm -hmm. All right. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, your challenge is the night is almost over. So either tonight or tomorrow, reach out to another five people. If you can do five people tonight. And make sure you do five people tomorrow, or five tonight and ten tomorrow. Reach out, say hi, say happy birthday. How are you? How are you doing? Look for some Facebook posts where they're suffering or they're not doing well. Reach out and say hi. Let them know you are there. All right, guys. Love you guys. Everybody have a fantastic evening. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.